Here we're going to start a whole new topic called differential equations. And there's a whole course and several courses you could take specifically devoted to differential equations because there's a lot of interesting stuff here. And I hope you do go on to take a course like that. And what you'll find is that differential equations is one of the most applicable areas of math. Whether you look at physics or economics or biology or social sciences, wherever you look, you can find differential equations that will model different behaviors. And this information we're going to learn here, as well as what you would learn in a full differential equations course, is very broadly applicable. And they're really interesting equations to solve. But we're going to scratch the surface here a little bit in this course. And then I hope you go on to do more with this in the future. So what is a differential equation? Very simply, a differential equation is an equation involving a function and its derivatives. So differential equations in general are equations that involve functions and their derivatives. Now, if you think carefully about that, you can start to see why these equations are so useful. Because, for instance, in the world of physics, there are derivatives all over the place. We have, for instance, an object. We can measure its position and then think about its velocity as being the derivative of that and its acceleration being the second derivative. And so if we knew something about the velocity and we wanted to find its position, for instance, we would really be solving a differential equation. And you can think about how that's related to what we've been doing so far in the course, because if we know something about the derivative, we often end up integrating to find something about the original function. So in these equations, when we solve them, the solution generally is that function, we'll call it y of x or y of t or something similar. So say we have a differential equation involving y and y prime. Our goal is to figure out what that function y is that fits that equation. Let me give you a simple example. A simple differential equation could look like this. y prime equals y. Notice that the independent variable is kind of implied here. We could call this y of x or y of t or whatever we want. But the important part is that the information we're given is that this function and its derivative are equal. Now before we actually show the solution to this, let me point out one mistake that's easy to make here at the beginning. You can look at this and say, okay, I know something about y prime, so let me integrate to find y. So if we integrate both sides of this, you would think of doing something like this. But the problem with this is that we can't integrate y because we don't know what y is. y is an unknown function, so there's no way to integrate it. We're stuck at this point. So that's what not to do. And in our short study of differential equations, we'll learn a few methods for solving these equations. But the one there on the right is just a mistake to watch out for. If you end up integrating your unknown function, that should be a red flag that you're on the wrong track. So let's look back at the example. And without doing anything fancy to solve it, let's see if we can guess what the answer should be. In other words, is there a function that we're aware of that is equal to its own derivative? And pretty quickly, you should recognize that the exponential function fits that description. So if y equals e to the x, then y prime also equals e to the x. So it fits this equation. But we can actually go a little bit further than that. e to the x isn't the only solution to this. In fact, 2 times e to the x would also fit that equation. In that case, y prime would also be 2 e to the x. And in fact, for any constant c, c e to the x is a solution to that equation. So this is what we would call the general solution. And we've seen this to some extent already. Whenever we integrate a function, we always have an arbitrary constant that shows up throughout the problem. 
and this constant c here is related to that arbitrary constant that we're already used to. It's the same kind of concept. Any value of c there will still fit into this differential equation. So one of the things we can do with a differential equation is if we are given a solution, we can check to see if that solution is valid. And we'll do more examples of that in just a minute. But that's one of the questions that you'll see from this unit is, here's a differential equation, here's a proposed solution. Can you verify that it's a solution or not by plugging it into the equation? So in this case, we can verify that if we take y prime and plug it in here and plug y in here, those two sides are equal. So we can verify that it fits. And again, we'll do more examples of that a little bit later. But first, going back to this example, this general solution, c e to the x, if we want what's called a specific solution, meaning where we have a specific value for c, something like 2 e to the x or negative 4 e to the x, we would need a little bit more information to find that. So for a specific solution, meaning to find c, we need more information. Specifically, let's think about what that graph looks like. The graph of c e to the x. For different values of c, the general shape of the graph doesn't change. If we graph e to the x, for instance, where c equals 1, we get something that looks like this. If we graph 2e to the x, we get something very similar, 3e to the x, and so on. So roughly speaking, that's more or less what the graph would look like for different values of c. So this general solution, we sometimes use the term a family of functions to describe this solution set. The solution is one of these curves in this family and we just describe it as c e to the x when that's all we know, when we just know the general solution. But think about what kind of information would be helpful in order to figure out which of these curves is the right one, or in order to specify one of these curves. And if you think about it, if we knew any single point that the solution passes through, we could specify a specific curve. For instance, if we knew that the curve passed through this point here, we would know that this is the specific solution to a differential equation. If on the other hand we were given an initial condition like this point over here, we know it would be this one. And so different initial conditions would specify different specific solutions. But as long as we're given some point that it passes through, we can specify an individual solution. The most common kind of information, the most common point that you'll find is called an initial condition, which means when x equals zero or t equals zero, meaning here on the y-axis. So if we're given this point highlighted in red here, again, that would pick out one specific solution from the universe of possibilities, all the general solutions, c e to the x. So for example, let's say the problem we were given said that y prime equals y, and again we're looking for the solution y of x, and let's say we were also told that y of 0 equals 12. Now let's think about what this means before we actually solve it. The differential equation, y prime equals y, tells us something about the situation. For instance, in a physics situation, you might think about information being given to you about the velocity of an object. The initial condition is information about y at a specific point in time. Now we happen to be given information about y when x equals zero. And we're told, in this case, that if y represented position, for instance, that the position at the beginning of this problem was 12, whatever that means. So we're given a differential equation and then this initial condition. So we guessed at the solution, 
without actually going through any solution method. But then we can find that value of C by plugging in the initial condition. So we can plug in 0 for x, and we can plug in 12 for y, because what this initial condition gives us is a connection between one x and y value. When x equals 0, y equals 12. So we can plug in those values, and we'll have 12 equals c e to the 0. e to the 0 is simply 1, so we figured out that 12 equals c, which means our specific solution would be y equals 12 e to the x. And that's another type of problem that we'll like to solve here at the beginning. We can take a solution that's given to us, and if we have an initial condition, we can solve for the arbitrary constant that is part of the general solution. So we'll go through some more examples where we will check proposed solutions and we will find the constants by using the initial condition. And then we'll look at a few examples where we can find solutions just by integrating without anything more complicated than that.